In today's video, we'll be taking a look at interior lighting, combining the uses of lumen, hardware ray tracing, and patch tracing. I'm going to show you how you can think of lighting in a way that will help you pick and choose the mood you're going for by simply lighting a couple of different lighting scenarios. It will really help you break down how to light any given interior. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers. Everything from the modeling, layout, lighting, rendering, and editing of this video has been done with the ASUS ZenBook Pro 16 OLED laptop. I don't get to keep the laptop, it's being sent back and only being used for reviewing purposes. Just before we jump into today's tutorial, I'm going to take a brief moment to talk about the hardware we're using today. The ASUS ZenBook Pro 16 OLED laptop runs on a beefy RTX 4070 that allows you to fully utilize hardware ray tracing and path tracing and Tensor AI cores, which is going to help massively when you're rendering your shots. It's got the CUDA cores you need, which are needed if you plan on 3D scanning things with an app like Reality Capture. And since it's a 40 series GPU, you can benefit from DLSS 3, which I've talked about in an earlier video right here. It's got 32 gigs of RAM, a Core i9 processor, which handles Unreal shader compilation like an absolute champ. The display on this laptop is absolutely top notch. 120 hertz with 100% DCI-P3 and 100% sRGB color coverage, and it's OLED, meaning your blacks are gonna be nice and inky. Some notable quality of life features include this nifty hinged keyboard, which not only feels a lot more natural to me when I'm typing, but also seems to help with the cooling. And the trackpad has haptic feedback, which was a nice surprise. NVIDIA Studio is for creators, but NVIDIA GeForce is for gamers, right down to the drivers. Even on my personal desktop workstations, I'm always using studio drivers just because I find them a lot more reliable than the game drivers for creative work specifically. If a laptop or desktop is NVIDIA Studio validated, it means that spec and design meet the needs of a creator. You can get NVIDIA Studio laptops at Scan Computers. You can check out the link down below. I thought it would be fun to make a tutorial using a laptop for a change because a lot of people assume that the work I do in Unreal can only be done on a crazy expensive workstation desktop, and that's just not the case. So let's get started with what you came here for, lighting interiors in Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so since we're getting started, I just want to make sure that you all have the same project settings that I'm using. I am currently using Unreal Engine 5.3, so by going to the settings up here, we're gonna to go to project settings. We're gonna scroll down to the rendering tab down here, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that support hardware ray tracing and turned on and patch tracing and turned on here as well. I'm using virtual shadow maps and make sure that use hardware ray tracing when available is turned on. And it should go without saying, but if you want this to work, you need a GPU that is capable of ray tracing. The GPU in this laptop is an RTX 4070, so you're not gonna have any issues with it. And one last thing, in the search panel up top, we're gonna to search for DirectX, and I believe you need to have DirectX 12 enabled. At least, that's what I'm using, and it works like a charm. So here we have a scene that I made in Unreal that is loosely inspired by a scene in Game of Thrones. And before we get started with the lighting, let's look at the reference and try to break down where the light is coming from. Notice how there is no artificial lighting. The only thing we're seeing is light pouring in through that doorway at the top of the stairs. That is the only light source, and the camera is exposing for the interior, making the exterior completely overexposed and blown out. And that is what we're going to try to mimic here. Now, this laptop handles this scene like an absolute champ. I'm blazing past 60 FPS without any issues. And if you want to follow along with this environment in this tutorial and reverse engineer how the scene was lit, you can download this project for free here on Gumroad, link down below. Just to be clear though, it's not going to look exactly the same because I'm using a lot of mega scan textures and models in this level and I'm not legally allowed to redistribute those assets, but you will have something to work with and the lighting will look the same. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to completely kill all of our lighting and we have to create a daylight system using the environment light mixer as always. So by going to the window tab up here, we're gonna go to the environment light mixer, create skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere and height fog. And next, we're going to create a post-process volume and drag it into our scene here and make sure we set it to unbound. Make sure this is checked right here. You'll see this is really important for pretty much everything moving forward in this video. So you'll see, obviously, this is very underwhelming. When it comes to interior lighting, indirect lighting is everything. And that's the main takeaway here. The easiest way is to increase the brightness of your skylight because this is our main source of light. Notice in our reference, we don't have any sunlight coming in there. The sun is probably pointing in a totally different direction. We only want skylight coming in. So we can select our skylight 
And we can increase the intensity scale to something ridiculous, like 20 or 100. 1,000? You'll see we're starting to get a little bit more lighting coming into our scene, but you'll see, uh, you know, it's, it's not really great. It's very splotchy. And I think that's really just because it's a limitation of Lumen right now with the skylight. It just doesn't have enough samples to work with. And so when that doesn't work, what's next? We can increase the exposure of the scene. So we're going to go to the post-process volume and we're going to search for EXP. And I'm going to check these three boxes here and uncheck apply physical camera exposure. And we can adjust the exposure this way. Now, again, this brightens everything up, but it's still pretty splotchy. Not really what we're going for. It's not really what we want. And we get this really not so great looking blue fog. And that's because we want to make sure that we select our exponential height fog and turn on volumetric fog. You'll see why this is important later. Now, in order to give your skylight a bit of a boost, you can also increase the brightness of your directional light to something like, I don't know, like 800 or something. And that will also help inject a lot more light because as you increase your directional light, it increases the brightness of your sky as well. So it kind of goes both ways. Honestly, I think a thousand here is probably a bit too strong. I would rather play around with the exposure later. So now we're, we are getting a bit of a better result over here, but still, this is not what we're going for. And the reason why, because the indirect lighting quality of Lumen is great, but Lumen just does not have enough samples to really get a high quality render from such a tiny light source coming in through that window. So we need to fake it. And in order to fake it, we're gonna go ahead and create a rect light over here and drag that over here and loosely shape it to the, well, shape and size of our doorway here. So by increasing the source width and the source height like that, loosely matching the size of it, the skylight does inject a little bit of indirect lighting, but it's just not enough. You're not getting enough consecutive bounces here. So we need to inject some direct lighting with the help of direct light here to really get some better results, okay? So with a rect light, we're also gonna increase the attenuation radius and maybe set the value to something like 800. And now notice how we are getting a much more interesting look, all because we've introduced a bit of direct lighting. It's okay to fake things. And now I'm going to increase, I can change the color a little bit, make it a little bit cooler. And there you have it. We're already having a much bluer look to our scene. And already we are about 60% of the way there. But you'll notice that the, there, these areas here are still very black, not very good looking. What more can we do? We don't want to increase the exposure we want to increase the indirect lighting values. Sometimes Lumen can be a little bit tricky. So this is why I like using the path tracer sometimes in order to help me figure out, like, hey, am I actually doing things right here? So by going to the lit tab here, we're going to go turn on path tracing. And what the path tracer is going to do is it's going to give you a more ground truth, physically accurate lighting result based on your current lighting settings. This is what your scene should look like if everything is set up correctly. There should be no tremendous difference between the two they should both be pretty similar. And if they're not, then there's other issues we need to fix. So you'll see we're missing out on a ton of indirect lighting over here. It, you'll notice it's not perfectly black. It's not there, not black at all there. So we need to go fix that somehow, right? We need to try and, and rectify this issue. And how do we inject a little bit more indirect lighting into our scene? We don't want to go ahead and increase the exposure again. That will work, but it also brightens up everything else. And we don't want that. All we want is to lift up those shadows a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and click on our rect light here. And we're going to scroll down to indirect lighting intensity. So I'm going to bump this up to something like five to exaggerate it a little bit. And you'll see, hey, we're starting to get a lot more indirect lighting into our scene. It's already looking a whole lot better. Now, keep in mind, this is not a physically accurate setting. Your changes here will not be mirrored in the path tracer because what's happening here is a surface is reflecting five times more light than it is receiving, which is physically impossible. So use this with caution. Use it only more of a subtle art direction kind of feature. Okay. Now, another issue that I'm noticing is our shadows here are very harsh, right? Again, if I turn on the path tracer, um, you'll notice that shadows are very, very soft here, right? They look really, really good. And I don't, I'm not seeing that. We're getting these really hard shadows here. Something feels off. And the reason for that is because of virtual shadow maps. When it comes to very, very soft shadows, you're just kind of hitting that limitation there. So in order to fix that, we're going to select our right light again, and we're going to search for ray trace. 
and we want to make sure we cast Ray Trace Shadows on and pay attention to the sheer difference here. No, especially notice on the wall here. This is before and this is after. Before and after. The shadows are so much softer. So we're getting much, much better softer shadows here now. When you need those really, really soft shadows, there's no way around using hardware ray tracing. And that is where RTX GPUs come in really, really handy. Another reason it's incredibly important to add direct lighting, even your, if your scene is mostly indirectly lit, is because of specular highlights. Now pay attention right here on the pillar on the left hand side here. I wanted to give it like a, you know, running water kind of look, like it was very damp. If I hide my rect light right now, and I only rely on the indirect lighting from Lumen, and I'm going to go ahead and increase the exposure here just for clarity's sake, Notice how it doesn't look wet. And the reason for that, at least this is my understanding, Lumen's indirect lighting is not going to contribute to specular highlights, at least not very much. You can clearly tell right here that there is just no real specular highlights. We completely lost the, that wetness that it had, right? And so that is why it's really important to inject that direct lighting to make that surface look wet. Now, bonus tip number one. If ever you notice this kind of like light bleeding in your interiors, this is actually something that's pretty common. You'll notice like along the edges, you just got this weird light that seems to be the skylight that's coming through the walls. You need to go ahead and add some light blockers to the exterior of your level. And what I mean by this is these large white cubes, right? It's literally just a big white cube that I place underneath my level to make sure that light is being blocked correctly. Because as we saw earlier, the skylight has some very low resolution sampling, which makes it very splotchy. And sometimes, at least my understanding is that you just need more geometry to block that light coming in. So again, if I were to just lower this cube right here, notice how we're getting a whole bunch of light that's bleeding into our scene here. Just lifting this big cube up here, whoa, that light's gone. That is how you can fix light that's leaking into the corners of your wall. It's very frustrating, but fortunately, with light blockers, it's a very easy fix. Now, let's say you wanted to have some light shaft or uh, some god rays coming through the window. You can absolutely do that too. So what, all we need to do is grab our directional light here and rotate it so that the sun shines through the, the doorway and we can angle it the way that we want to, something like this. And you'll see it injects quite a bit of indirect lighting into our level as well. And we got these light shafts here thanks to the volumetric fog that we turned on in our exponential height fog earlier. See, if I turn off volumetric fog here, it's going to be a totally different look and we don't get those light shafts coming through. If I want to make that light shaft even stronger, we can simply just increase the volumetric scattering intensity even higher. So I, I had already set it to 10 here. By default, it'll be one. You might not even see it, but if we increase it to like 50, 100, you'll see it's a very, very strong god ray shining in our scene now and already we're getting quite a bit of indirect lighting bouncing up and lighting the rest of our scene this doesn't match the reference we were going for but i still just wanted to show you that it is something that you can do but for now i'm just going to go back bring it back up here because that's not the look i wanted every single light can have its own volumetric scattering intensity you'll see in my rect light i already had it cranked up to six if you want more fog like that coming coming in, which we do have in our reference here, that is how you can control that. Bonus tip number two, there's one more trick we have up our sleeve in order to inject a little bit more indirect lighting into our scene. Again, this breaks physicality, but it's a really cool tip to know about. In our post-process volume, we're gonna search for Lumen. And here we've got a neat little tip called Diffuse Color Boost. I already set it to two. But if I set it to one, you'll see our shadows are very dark, right? It, it's very pitch black. We could always just increase the indirect lighting of our rect light, but by increasing the color boost here, it's going to increase the boost of not our light, but of the albedo values of our materials. So if I set it to two, you'll see we've already injected quite a bit more indirect lighting into our level here. Again, purely in art direction thing, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just important to know which tools are available to you. So I hope that helps. So now that we covered this scene here, how do you light an interior that doesn't have any natural light? And that my friend is artificial lighting. So I'm gonna hide this here and turn this on here. 
You'll see here we've got a completely differently lit scene. I'm not going to go ahead and show you how to place each individual light, but really it's about breaking down what our lighting is. This is a really quick reference I found from some old museum somewhere, and to notice how there is no natural light here. It's all artificial. You, as a lighting artist, need to break down and ask yourself, where is my lighting coming from? If I turn on my light in my bedroom at night, the light source is your light bulb or your lamp or whatever. And that's how we need to break it down here. So I went ahead and added some light fixtures here. We need a physical prop that is there to suggest that, hey, there's lighting here. This is, this is actually what is contributing to the illumination of the scene. Because if I were to hide these light fixtures here and you just place light, something would feel a little bit odd. Something feels like something is missing, right? So that's why we need not only add some practical light props, but really think about where the lights are coming from. And then I just added some point lights here and adjusted them to the rough shape of my light source by increasing the uh, source length here. You can kind of increase the source length of any point light. And I've just went ahead and placed them there. And again, using the exact same trick that we learned earlier, either the exposure of your post-process volume, the global exposure of your scene, or the indirect lighting intensity of your light, or the diffuse color boost of your post-process volume, right? If I want to set the two or five, you'll see we're, we made this scene much, much brighter. Not really the look I'm going for, but you get the idea. The actual lighting part here is not very complicated. Again, just to give you one more example, I've used these torch props that are on the wall to suggest torch light. And also each point light that I placed Again, it's really just a simple point light right here that I placed over the torch. Each light that I placed also has a volumetric scattering intensity that I cranked way up to suggest that maybe there's a little bit of moisture in the scene or a little bit of haze or smoke or whatever. That's really it. The key to interior lighting is just to break down where my lighting is coming from and understanding exposure, indirect lighting, and direct lighting. All right? Thanks so much to NVIDIA Studio and Scan Computers for sponsoring this video. Scan Computers are one of the leading resellers on NVIDIA Studio laptop and desktops in Europe. If you're looking for an NVIDIA Studio laptop, then check out their range at the link down below. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, folks, happy rendering.